Hello everyone, this is Simina, and welcome back to my reading room. And welcome back to Boo Boo as well. He's here and he's got a new toy. This is his anniversary toy, because we celebrated a seven year anniversary. It's been seven years since I adopted him. <laughs> so yeah, this is, says hello, his new toy. Uh, I know I have been uh, very absent of late. I've been slacking off, but uh, I'm back now. I don't know how long and if I'll stay, but I do have a lot of books that I want to review, so hopefully I'll be able to be here more than once a month. Also, um, I've got a short story of mine published at a site called 96th of October. I had that story published at the beginning of se September on their uh, autumn issue. And uh, I'm going to post the link down below. Come on. <laughs> and uh, if you are a fan of science fiction and of space travel, I have a very short, cute short story that you might like. And also maybe check out the rest of the issue because... Uh, it's a very, very nice issue with a lot of fun stories. All right, and today I'm back with another book review, and it's uh, The Boy Who Belonged to the Sea uh, by Denise uh, Theriol. Uh, I'm butchering the name, and I'm sorry, my French is uh, like on and off, <laughs> and maybe not very good comes to speaking. Uh, and it's uh, published by a Canadian, uh, written by a Canadian author. I haven't heard of him before. And it was uh, in my attempt to uh, try to find uh, books that are by uh, non-English, non-American. Yeah, of course. So I wanted to read some uh, foreign literature and because I've got this in a translation and it's a very good translation, we'll get down to it later. Um, it's, it was one of my attempts to like uh, broaden my reading horizon and I don't regret it because it's, uh, <laughs> it's a very, very uh, unusual style of writing and a uh, very great story. All right, uh, it's uh, a story uh, is told from the point of view of a young boy uh, who uh, moves in a sea town, in a town by the sea, moves to his grandparents. After uh, his uh, parents, uh, he loses his father in a snowmobile accident. Uh, and uh, his mother is in a coma as a result of that accident. Uh, and uh, he meets uh, he meets another boy named Luke, who uh, has a very bad relationship with his father and who has uh, lost his mother also. And this uh, kind of bonds the two of them. And it creates a bond. And they kind of form a very, very strong friendship. And uh, it's uh, the story moves on to become something like you don't know if it's fantasy or if it's just uh, a child's active imagination because, as I said, the story is told from the point of view of a child. So you don't know if uh, a lot of the elements there, if they are truly fantasy or if they are just a result of. Uh, imagination and this this ambiguity is actually what uh, makes the story uh, very very uh, interesting and it keeps you guessing uh, it's uh, it's got fun parts it's got beautiful descriptions uh, it's got a very very wonderful voice even though like I said it's written by a child uh, the author knows that uh, the voice of a, of a child was almost teenager, if I remember correctly, he's 12. Excuse the dog, <laughs> he's uh, very active. Uh, so that uh, the voice of a teenager doesn't necessarily have to be 
uh, like dumped down and uh, I don't know with a lot of uh, slang a lot of this kind of stuff so it's uh, the voice of a very clever and insightful person and I think that it, it's not unrealistic because uh, some children can be like that especially children who go through tragedies who are forced to mature earlier they can have this voice so I actually find it very refreshing that he is not trying to uh, dumb it down like this. So he's not. Uh, he keeps the style insightful. He keeps it uh, melancholic, nostalgic, and a little bit bitter at times. A little bit bitter at times, at other times hopeful. So he creates a very complex character, a very complex narrator. Uh, He's never named the, the, the narrator, but it doesn't matter. And uh, it's uh, it's very refreshing to see uh, like uh, a story from the point of view of a teenager, of a child, uh, written like this. So it's uh, it's extremely refreshing for me, and I'm pretty sure that for for people of this age, uh, it's it would be refreshing for them as well. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, while the story has some very nice parts, um, it's actually quite sad at times. Quite sad, quite, uh, gloomy. Uh, and, uh, I don't, I, I never thought that uh, a story like this, I'd actually like it because I, I don't usually go for extreme, this kind of, uh, tragic stuff. But uh, it's written in such a delicate way, and it's got it makes a point. So it's, I think it's it's not made to emphasize uh, like the drama, and it's it's made to everything is made to seem like okay. It was some some of the things were tragic, but uh, what what did you what did you get out of it? So some of the things were worth it something like that i don't want to spoil it too much in case you want to read it but yeah it's it's heartbreaking but at the same time it's uh, very beautiful and uh i like uh, the relationship between the narrator and luke they're very good friends they're kind of like uh, at a lot of times uh the narrator calls luke like he's uh my brother or he's like my brother and yeah it's uh, it's very nice. I'm uh, as I said, I, I enjoy friendship. If if there is uh, one fictional relationship that I read about over and over again, that's uh, friendship, because it's uh, so complex to figure out the motivation. Because uh, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but uh, if you have romance, uh, the motivations are really clear. So it's not like yeah. Uh, it's fun when it happens to you, but uh, I don't know, I, I've, I was never impressed by uh, romance in literature and in fiction. Sorry. <laughs> so, it's I thought it slowed things down. But, uh, yeah, this, uh, I've, I'll always read uh, about a good friendship. And this one has it, even though it is uh, extremely sad. Uh, now, I want to talk about something else regarding this book. And this the fact that the book was not written originally in English. Uh, it was uh, translated. And uh, the lady who translated it... Um, I, have, I have the translator's name written in the description because... Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce it, and I don't want to butcher her name. Uh, she's actually quite a famous translator in Canada. Apparently, she's won uh, prizes for that. She's won the uh, General's Literary Award for Translation, the Ca Canada Council Prize for Translation for uh, some, some of her works. And uh, she was shortlisted another time. And she is, she's absolutely brilliant. So this translation was, yeah, you'll get it back. Not now, he threw his toy. 
Uh, this translation was one of the greatest works that I've ever uh, written, that I've ever read, sorry, yeah, I wish I translated this in such a beautiful way. And you don't, so there are translations where you feel that something is, it's not that it's necessarily bad, but you feel that it's, it shouldn't have been like this, so it should have been different. But this one is, is so delicate and so uh, so carefully uh, put together that you can tell that she took a lot of care, that she made an effort to transmit what the author was trying to transmit and to make it, uh, to make a reader that is not familiar with French, to make an English speaking reader feel the same emotions that the author was trying to uh, convey. So it's it's one of the it's one of the most beautiful translations I've ever read. And uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for it because otherwise uh, the it, the impact wouldn't have been uh, so great for me. But it was. And uh, since uh, since I'm a translator myself since I've done this sort of thing myself, I know it is not easy. And I know that you need a special relationship between like, the book. So the book first needs to make an impact on you as a translator. You have to understand it in like, not only through the technical things, but also like through the aesthetic and kind of like, I don't want to say through the soul because it sounds might sound strange for some, but yeah, you have to feel it not only rationally, but like from an aesthetic point of view as well. And uh, yeah, she, she does a wonderful job and I'm uh, hats off to her because uh, she's, she's extremely brilliant and uh, she made a very great uh, work. The two of them uh, together are like, you know, a very great team. I don't know if they've ever worked together directly, but uh, a translator and a writer do make a team, even if they never know each other, even if the writer is already dead. You have to like kind of get into that person's mind to figure out what they were trying to say. And yes, so one of the best translations ever, one of the best books ever. I heartily recommend it. And uh, yeah, it won, it also won some prizes. So it was, and it was his debut novel, which is impressive because it's a, it's a really, really impressive novel. And uh, one that I'd, uh, I don't say I'd read again, but uh, because now knowing what's going to happen, it might be a bit different, but I'll, I'll definitely uh, put on my favorites list because it had, it had everything that a good book should have. It had great characters, it had atmosphere, had a bit of this ambiguous element, you don't know what's real, what's not, and it was... Uh, well, it was a very like a tribute to the power of imagination and how imagination helps you cope, especially uh, for children. And uh, yeah, it had a great relationship between characters and uh, everything, everything worked. So yeah, do read it if you haven't, especially if you don't often read uh, books by non-English, non-American writers, because uh, you're going to, you're not going to regret it. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my little review. I hope uh, it's not the only one in this month and that I'm, I hope I'm not going to have any other long absences, but you never know. And uh, I'll see you again. Have a great day and stay safe out there.